Uh, they run down. They have a Wrestle Dream hype video in the card, including the line from Tony Khan doing the voice voiceover, where he claims they will end a chapter in wrestling history and begin a new era in AEW. Is this just a promoter promoting something? Does this mean something big is going to happen? We shall see. But the card. Swerve Strickland versus Hangman Page. Chris Jericho and the Golden Lovers versus Sammy Guevara and Will Ospreay and Kanosuke Takeshita. Eddie Kingston versus Katsuyori Shibata with both of Eddie's titles on the line. Better Than You, Bebe versus The Righteous for the ROH tag titles. FTR versus Aussie Open for the AEW tag titles. Chris Statlander versus Julia Hart for, I believe, the TBS title. Christian Cage versus Darby Allen for the TNT title. And Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. for an honorable title, but no official title. You know, that's another one. Now that the, now the show's over, we can talk about it here. So we had a match on Rampage where the winning team will be facing Adam Cole and MJF at the pay-per-view. And that's presuming Adam Cole can wrestle because we still have no update on his ankle. So the obvious team to face Adam Cole and MJF for the Ring of Honor tag team titles would be Taven and Bennett. Because they are buddies with Roderick Strong. And Roderick Strong is buddies with Adam Cole. It's the obvious match. I mean, it's that's clearly what the next step is in this storyline. Well, what's Roddy going to do? What's Cole going to do? It's Roddy's guys against Cole and MJF. Ring of Honor tag team titles. I mean, hello, right? Well, the winner of the match ends up being the righteous. Yeah. I say this every week. This is the same thing with FTR and the workhorsemen. I have nothing against the righteous. Why are the righteous facing MJF and Adam Cole on a in a in a pay-per-view? MJF is the world heavyweight champion of AEW. He is wrestling on a pay-per-view in a Ring of Honor tag team title match against Vincent and Dutch. I'm sure the match will be great, but what? Why is this happening? Why is it not... MJF and Adam Cole versus Taven and Bennett with Roderick Strong. What am I missing here? I, I don't know. I, I guess they think that match would be so much better than the Kingdom. That's yeah, what you want to see. I don't have an answer. I don't know what's going on. It's not even a, it's not even a match quality. It's like this is the, this is the obvious next step in the storyline. Yeah. Adam. Kingdom's yelling at Cole. This is all your fault. It's not my. It is all your fault. This is what's next. But no, they lost. And now it is the righteous facing them for the tag team titles. I am baffled. Baffled. Main event. Ricky Starks versus Brian Danielson in a Texas death match, when, which in AEW is the same as a last man standing match pretty much anywhere else. Uh, it was awesome. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> Brian Danielson's the best wrestler in the world, having maybe the best string of big matches in his career, and he's been hurt for like half the year. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Uh, Danielson ends up bleeding. They're, they're, it's all brawling in the crowd, a literal garbage match at one point, and uh, Starks is working the cut, busting him up with the bell shot. And <laughs> when Starks goes up top... Danielson whacks him with a chair to send him down and starts laying in the kicks in the entire building. And this crowd was not in the most of the show. But man, when Brian Danielson's laying in the kicks, they're standing and chanting along. And it's yes, 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 it's the old gimmick. But damn it, they're into it and they care. And uh, we go to a second commercial break. And they have this big ass slap fight. Danielson, or excuse me, Starks wraps a chain around Danielson's neck, much as Danielson wrapped the strap uh, or the uh, tape, whatever it was, around uh, his neck to beat him in their first match. Uh, we have the <laughs> uh, spear into a label lock, and he adds the chain, and obviously is counting while the guy's still in the hold, which doesn't seem to work out, but it didn't matter. It wasn't the finish. And then Brian gets the mount, and Brian Danielson's ground and pound elbows from the mat were so 
awesome. Just raining down a hellfire on this on this guy. And then he really did rain down hellfire. He kneed a chair into Ricky's face and busted him open. And uh, Danielson was bleeding from his forehead, and it was your average wrestler blood. And uh, Starks was bleeding like from like under his eye. It was this thick, viscous fluid. And it starts pouring out of his mouth. He's all messed up. He needs to never wrestle Brian Danielson again. He just gets beat up all the goddamn time. And uh, he Danielson wraps the chain around his knee, does the chain-assisted knee strike. Ricky Starks, like any sane person would do, stays down. And Danielson gets the win. It was funny because first, when Ricky wraps the the chain around Danielson's neck, like Danielson's dead, and Ricky finally lets go, and and uh, the ref starts to do the standing ten count, and then later they do it where where uh, Brian wraps a chain around Ricky's neck, and she starts counting while the chain's still around the guy's neck, and he's in a wrestling hole, and even the announcer's like, "What is she doing here? That's not fair." So there was no way this was going to live up to the strap match, but it was still pretty damn awesome. And, uh, you know, Brian got busted open early, and he, he saw, and speaking of selling, by the way, they did a spot where uh, Brian did a springboard over, uh, or no, it was Ricky did a springboard, and he wiped out Daniels and ended up in the front row, and there's all these security guys that were there, these security guys who ended up catching him. And, uh, and the best part about it was they landed on the lap of this fan, and you got to watch his fan. He decides he's going to sell it. So he's like, oh, oh, I was, I was dying. He wanted to be part of the show. Sure. So he sold it, and it didn't look very good. But anyway, uh, there was, you know, blood, and he, there was uh, Brian ended up getting busted up, and Ricky bit his cut and got a you sick fuck chat, which, by the way, they did not bleep. They bleep so much on this show. They did not bleep you sick fuck. And so, rest of it, Ricky ended up getting all busted open there at the end as well. His face is all messed up. And uh, they did the overrun. So, uh, for those of you that watch on, on YouTube TV, well, you had to wait a day to see the end, like I had to. But we finally saw it, and uh, I thought it was a great match. I thought it was a great match. Not a big fan of the, the 50-50 stuff, because we just see it so much in WWE, and, you know, kind of negates Ricky's win over the guy last week. So, uh, you know, someone here was like, I could see Ricky winning the rubber match. Rubber match? <laughs> this was a rubber match. Because cause Danielson beat him, mm-hmm. and then Ricky pinned him in the tag match, and then Danielson beat him here again. Yeah, this is so uh, extra innings, basically. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's beaten him. So if, if, you know, if Ricky beats him again, then they're still 50-50. It's just... Uh, well, even, even if you, you only do singles matches, then it's a, a sweep. Yeah. Danielson's won all the singles matches. Yeah. That's a strange comment. Oh, well. Live TV. So anyway, that was uh, that was the show, and uh, it was good. I had some questions about it, but uh, the main event was an excellent main event. Yeah. The opener was an excellent opener. Yeah. And uh, the rest of it was... Uh, up and down. Up and down. But it was all, all in all, in total, a fun two hours. And then Anthony Bowens starts talking about Mr. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> He's in tears. Talking about Mr. Ass. One more time, he says, from your couch at home, scissor me, daddy ass. I wish they would have said something like, we called him on the ass phone. Remember how Gorilla Monsoon had the banana phone? Yeah. I just imagine a phone, an ass phone that they oh, used to call Billy I'm going to regret this Google search. <laughs> <laughs> For an article on Vice from April of 2016. <clears throat> the secret world... Of tiny phones that go inside your butt. Oh, really? Well, wow, that's that's not quite what I was expecting. Nor, wait a second. There's an article on this. Can you can you send me this article? Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute. Now, if you hello, told me, hello, hello. Craig, please. What are we talking about? I don't know. Wrestling Dynamite. or something. Okay. Collision. Collision. House of Black versus Darius Martin in action and ready of Lee Johnson. That's where you keep the phone. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, guys. Did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. 
Click join today and don't miss out.